Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Velocity Channel, where we cover all things Velocity Banking. We're going to show you how to pay down those loans with your credit card or your line of credit. All right. Listen, we have a question today that is really going to test us. Okay? It's going to test our resolve, uh, especially during this time on whether or not we will ever get a credit card again or ever get a line of credit again or ever get a loan again all right or ever invest again all right and we want to make sure that we're giving you the knowledge to take away the fear and so that you could be resolved in growing your wealth as well as eliminating that bad debt notice i said bad debt okay adjectives binky t asks don't forget to like share and subscribe because people need to know this so they can better their economy. All right. So we should be applying for personal lines of credit if we don't own a home. Boy, that is a very good question, isn't it? Especially during these times, a lot of things have changed. But what I want you to do is I want you to always remember this that other people's money, you can make this into a shirt if you want to. Other people's money is greater than no money. Absolutely, absolutely. Let me say it again. Other people's money is greater than no money. And what do you mean by that, CJ? This is what I mean. Those personal lines of credit that you're applying for, when you get approved, is that your money or is that their money? Whoever it is that says, yes, you know, we can approve this one. That's why credit is so important. That's why I want you to get a first lien HELOC. Okay. A lot of you don't know that that's actually a thing. You don't have to worry about the mortgage. If you've got a first lien HELOC, it's so much more flexible. All right, get with me. It's in the description below. Hmm? Other people's money is greater than no money. You see, right now, you only have a limited amount of money. This is why businesses crave business credit. It's because they know that they can do way more with a hundred thousand dollars than they can with a measly one hundred dollars all right so yes should we be applying for personal lines if you don't own a home yes apply for as many lines as you can but always remember that if you want a good credit score if you want a good credit score it all depends on your priorities you got to make sure that you are not overdoing it. That's why I always stress, if you need to get a credit card, three to five credit cards, and don't overdo it as far as the personal lines of credit go. You know, one or two lines of credit is good enough, okay? I'm talking about personal lines of credit, not the, you know, not the credit card, all right? Now, if you have the personal line of credit and the credit cards, that's even better. You know why? Because, let's say you have 30,000, right in credit cards right but let's say you spent fifteen thousand of that okay so you spent fifteen thousand so you got a balance of fifteen thousand dollars okay uh, right here and we're just going to do that in 15k right that's the balance you're at 50 percent credit utilization but <laughs> if you got another personal line of credit for, let's say, another 30 grand, right? Well, your credit utilization just went from 50% to, let's see, what is it? That's 15,000. Out of 60, I'm going to try to do this in my head, folks. You know what? What is it? About 30, 20, 25%? Let me see. Is that right? We're going to go ahead and 
divide that by 60. 15 divided by 60 equals, yeah, 25%. You know, 25%. So you're actually at, right, the correct range to keep your credit score intact, 25%. Because credit utilization, it's at 30%. All right? So what do we want to do with all of these lines of credit? You mentioned um, BKT that, man, you know, should we be applying for lines of credit if we don't own a home? Yes. But now that you've got the lines of credit, what are you going to do with it? All right. May I offer some suggestions? If you have any student loans, SLs, okay? if you have any mortgages, M's, right? if you have any car loans, CFs, all right? Don't those look like sizes? Right. If you have any loans, may I suggest that you put in priority. First, you're going to put in priority each of these loans through what we call the cash flow index. All right. We're going to make sure that we do this calculation. We're going to take the balance and we're going to divide it by the minimum monthly payment. And that's going to be on the student loan. It's going to be on the mortgage. And it's also going to be on the car loan. That's right. Okay. And each one, each one, you're going to go through and you're going to say, okay, I'm going to go ahead and knock out this one first. And then this one. And then that one. All right. And you're going to do it all to the power of your 30K or 5K or 1K line of credit. Because we want to make sure that we have this money working for us and not against us. Does that make sense? Absolutely. So we have the student loan. Let's say it comes in at um, 90 cash flow index score. All right. We have the mortgage. Let's say that comes in at 100. Right. And let's have the car loan. That's going to come in at 30. Right. Okay. Which one are we going to pay off first? Which one are we going to pay off first? Huh? We're going to pay off first the car loan. Why? Because it has the lowest score. That's the one that is inefficient. It's called an inefficient loan. All right? And so the higher the number, the more efficient the loan, meaning it's efficient cash flow for you. You can actually put that cash flow into somewhere else. So let's say you're spending like, what, $600 a month? Boom. You're knocking that out. All right? And you're using the velocity banking method to do that. Or maybe you even have, you're fortunate to get the Money Max account. Okay, it's doing it for you. You're just punching the numbers in and it's spitting out the numbers and you're, you're on your way to building wealth. Okay, let's go ahead and cross that out. With the same $600 a month, guess what you're going to do? You're going to make sure you velocitize this student loan. Okay, and you're going to pay that off. If you haven't asked for forgiveness, debt forgiveness first, I don't know. Maybe you want to. Maybe you're a teacher. Maybe you're eligible. Who knows? Who knows? All right. And then you're going to pay that off. And then you're going to do you're going to be the talk of your neighborhood when you pay off your mortgage. Huh? Yeah, you're going to pay that off. And so now that you've got all of these debts paid off, what are you going to do? Because guess what? Even after all your debts have been paid, guess what? Guess what level you still are? So you dug yourself out of the hole, right? But you're still at level zero. You're still at ground zero. So that's where we want to think about turning our lines of credit into wealth building machines. Because you don't want to be at level zero all the time, all right? You want to make sure that you're building legacy wealth, making sure that your community knows how to build wealth, making sure that you go forward huh? and that what you leave here lasts. Does that make sense? So this is what you want to do right here. You want to build it from ground zero. You want to build it up and then show others how to do it as well. Folks, thank you so much for tuning in. God bless you. Send in your questions. We love your questions and we love answering them. Take care. And God bless.